Following the last video, I noticed that a fair few of you thought my portable NASCOM was something to be laughed at. So I had a rethink, and for my latest NASCOM project, I built this. I bet you're not laughing now, are you? I know what you're thinking, it's just an old computer in a fancy box, but is it? I think what we have here is a legacy. In the last video I introduced the NASCOM and tried to describe the many relationships they're going to have and how they develop a soul. And since then it looks like plenty of you out there have been searching either the loft or eBay to get your hands on one. As I mentioned before these things originally came in a kit with a keyboard, albeit without a power supply. Obviously if you're a new money NASCOM owner like me it's unlikely that you'll have built a kit to get your NASCOM but it's important to remember that it must have been built by someone. Someone who probably went through immeasurable stress and anxiety. Which means that even if you only have a board like this, it's probably already had a close relationship with at least one other person. Despite having that early relationship, this board of mine was in something of a nascent state. So I've gathered a few bits together uh, in order that it could be reborn uh, and start the rest of its journey. Uh, and hopefully if we get it right, uh, it'll be around long after I've gone, giving pleasure to others, forming new relationships and developing some soul. Like I said, what we have here is a legacy, which is pretty cool when you think about it. Before all that though, uh, it's worth spending a moment considering the amount of effort required to build an Ascom kit and what it must have been like. One simple way to do this would be to show you a kit being built. Well, there are a couple of reasons why I won't be doing that. Firstly, it would be insanely boring. And well, secondly, mine's already built. Mark Twain said, history never repeats itself but it often rhymes. So let me show you something that rhymes, historically speaking. This is me doing some soldering. So for the full experience, keep winding the video back until you've watched it 3000 times and you'll get the idea. And for good measure, here's the unboxing video. Actually, that was an Acorn System 3, but don't worry, the experience is the same. Now, once the kit has been built, it had to be made to work. And if you were lucky, it would only take a week or so. In 2023, getting the thing working is kind of part of the fun. But spare a thought for someone back in the late 70s, who instead of having that feeling of excitement and satisfaction, had a week or so of stress and anxiety, especially if they'd just spent a month's wages to buy the thing. Once it was finally sorted, though, it would probably have looked something a bit like this, artistically spread across a bench or a desk. I've said before that I think the naked look suits an Ascom, uh, but the nostalgic feeling of an exposed system quickly changes the panic when inquisitive grandchildren turn up, as in my case. So for me at least, uh, a case has become a necessity. I did think about crafting a case out of some wood I've got, and to be honest, I did have some success. The family were very impressed. Uh, the thing is the wood's not at its best uh, and whilst they expect an old machine to collect a bit of dust and the odd spider I kind of draw the line at woodworm really. As well as that it wasn't quite the legacy I wanted to leave so I tried something else. Some time back uh, I bought a few Eurocode racks uh, via eBay. To be honest I can't remember why I bought them now but I'm really glad I did because I'm building an Acorn System 3 in this one. Um, the second house is the NASCOM I'll show you that again in a minute. And I still have this one left for, uh, for another project, for a Gemini project I've got in mind. It's all go around here, I can tell you. The case I'm using here was slightly bigger than the other two, which means I can fit the NASCOM in easily and still have plenty of room for other goodies, such as this programmable graphics card and Neil Crook's disc emulator. I fitted this aluminium to the case uh, to fasten in the main board. Uh, the back panel is a piece of Perspex, uh, which I bought by accident. Uh, but that's another story. Uh, and the new power supply, well, that's new, obviously. Uh, having said that, there's still room to put your fingers in the back here, um, so it's sufficiently dangerous to make it honest and an authentic upgrade. This NASCOM is an ASCOM 2, uh, and it simply needs a back plane uh, to allow additional boards to be used. Uh, if you have an ASCOM 1, you'll need a buffer board or something similar to give you that option. For my back plane, I had a few options. I've got this Vera board. Uh, this was obviously going to be for one of the biggest projects I was ever going to do. Um, I can't honestly remember what it was for now, uh, but I imagine it would have been quite something. Um, 
I also have this original NASCOM backplane that has been customised with a hacksaw. Um, I have these Gemini ones. Uh, oops, excuse me. I have these Gemini ones here, um, and I also have this map one as well. So I've got quite a selection. Um, obviously, I'm really lucky to have so many options. Um, but the thing is, if I'd have used any of these, I wouldn't have been able to get all the cards in that I wanted. Um, I really wanted uh, to be five slots in here. Um, I mean, you can see that this is a six slot backplane, but even if it was a five slot by, by uh, having the hacksaw mod, it still wouldn't have fitted. Now this has reduced my options to quite a few, in fact to one. Uh, and that was to create a custom backplane using the Veripod by simply putting the connectors closer together. Which would have been fine until I remember what the variable was for. Uh, but ha as luck would have it, Richard, uh, better known as Code Squeak, announced that he had just created a new five slot backplane design. The one he designed still wouldn't fit, but I talked him into redesigning it so that it would. Remarkably, he did, and here it is. So now I have a five slot backplane which just fits in my three unit high case. And the really great thing about this is it's yellow. Here it is fitted into the back of the case. For the front panel, I took inspiration from Sam over at Look Mum No Computers, who like many, built his synthesizer modules behind these kind of panels. Uh, so I've done the same. I don't mean I've built a synthesizer, obviously. Uh, now these panels are available over, all over eBay, uh, although to be honest, trying to get them all that match in the same finish, etc., is harder than it should be. But with a few simple tools and makeshift templates, you can get a reasonable finish that still looks homemade, which makes it just about right in my book. In my system, each panel has a separate group of functions, uh, and those are plugged into the respective cards. It means if I want to change something, I can swap out the card and its associated panel. Easy. So here it is, all labelled up, a NASCOM Reborn. Let's have a quick look inside and see what options I went for. So looking in the top for a minute, the wiring is deliberately left a little messy for authenticity and gone are the bits of Lego which used to support the cards. I now have this ridiculous affair from Heath Robinson. I have no idea what I was on when I dreamed this up. Um, I might switch back to using Lego, although I'll probably use period Lego this time. Here we have the main board with front panels. Um, it's a cassette panel uh, and serial port, which has connections to the serial header and a new header that attaches to clock signals on the main board. This allows me to switch between uh, cassette and serial, provide external clocking, uh, and once again this is clearly homemade which feels right for this machine. It'll be quite nice for those seeing this in decades to come. The keyboard and PIO panels also connect to the mainboard connectors. The PIO has a switch um, that gives additional supply voltages from the front panel power bus. So the EEPROM program I have can plug straight in. Then I have a 64K memory card, uh, which remarkably has 64K memory. Uh, this does need a panel. Here is a brand new floppy controller, which is so new it hasn't actually been built yet. This is another board from Richard, aka Code Squeak. Uh, I went for purple this time. Talking of colour, I have this Teletext graphics card. The card has a, a switch which allows the displays to switch between the normal NASCON one and the Teletext card and in the centre position um, this allows this to be done in software which is really cool. This board is an I.O. board to control something interesting and once I have something interesting to control it'll come in really useful. The serial and two of the PIOs from this board also appear on front panels. The third PIO will probably be connected internally to something such as Neil Crook's disk emulator or this Henlick disk unit uh, once I've got it working. I still have to make a case for the keyboard. Um, I've got plenty of wood left, although maybe I'll just leave it for now. Of course, with me putting all these gubbins in my NASCOM and others doing the same, but with different gubbins, it means that these things quickly become pretty unique. And that's without all the local enhancements that will inevitably happen. The really great thing about this is that with everybody's machine effectively being different, the discussions on the NASCOM user group tend to be quite varied and a gold mine of information. On top of that, it turns out they're a friendly bunch and are very receptive to new money NASCOM owners like me. I'll put a link in the description. So there we are. In the last video, we looked at a machine that had developed history and soul. And in this one, 
created a machine that will hopefully go on and do the same. But before I go, I'd quickly like to show you another option for owning a NASCOM. This is Neil Crook's NASCOM 4. Actually, it's my NASCOM 4. What I mean is Neil Crook designed it. It's an FPGA implementation, but it includes some hardware elements such as a floppy controller and I.O. components and so on, which make it quite special. The device is detailed rather well on Neil's YouTube channel and GitHub pages. Uh, I'll leave links in the description and I recommend you take a look. Obviously woodworm shouldn't be an issue now with this machine, uh, but it will gather dust. Uh, now when it's this pretty, it really should be doing something whilst it's gathering dust. Um, back in the day, of course, the first thing you would have done was to start programming. During the life of the NASCOM, there were multiple programming languages, Pascal, Fourth, Z80, Assemblers and so on. There were at least eight versions of BASIC. Today things are even better. Here I am coding in a mix of C and Assembler on my Mac with a simple script to compile for the NASCOM, test it in the emulator and then create a disk image for use on the real hardware. There's loads of options nowadays. If you want to know more about this sort of stuff or anything else for that matter, let me know in the comments. I mean, I can always be persuaded to create another video. So there we are, a NASCOM legacy. And I can't help imagining all of the relationships it will go on and have and the people it will meet along the way. It all feels pretty special somehow. See you next time.